Okay, great children. We are going to do chapter 11, lesson 1. Okay? Like I say every day, for you to understand, you must know how to read. You must understand the vocabulary. So here is chapter 11, lesson 1. It says make predictions. Okay? You must know this vocabulary right here. See? You must know what is a statistic. Uh, you must know what's a survey. You must know what's a population. You must know what is a sample. Okay? Now, when we have statistics, it is data we have collected. Data about something. Do people like Pepsi compared to Coca-Cola? Do people like uh, plain, uh, plain pizza compared to meat pizza? Do people like going to Ferrari World or going where? To IMG World. Uh, do people like going to France or going to Germany? So you're conducting a questionnaire or a survey. You want to question people where what they like or what they don't like, depending on what you want to find out. So this collecting of information is what we are calling statistics, okay? Statistics is just information about something. Now, when we have statistics, we have to collect data, we have to organize the data that we have collected, and we need to be able to explain what the data we've collected represent, or what does it mean, okay? So, once you've collected the data, you must organize it. And then you interpret the data you've collected. So how do you collect the data? By conducting a survey. So how do you make a survey? So let's say I want to conduct a survey of um, what is the favorite color of students in Morajib. So then I'll have a small piece of paper. I don't want to waste my paper. But we're going to write here. Okay, I write, I write over here, my survey, survey about, uh, survey about favorite color, okay, and then I make boxes, I say white, black, yellow, blue and then i have a box for other okay like that and then i make this for all the students so i cut so let's say in Muraji there's 700 students so i'll have 700 little pieces of this paper okay then in tabur i pass it out to every student who came to tabur that day or i wait until period one and then I go to each class and make sure the students answer the question like that. So this is, this is a survey. After the student tick, they put it in a container and that's you collecting data. Okay. Now we need to think about what is a population. So a population is a group that is being studied. Like I can say, what, what do the students in Murajib school, uh, what ice cream flavors do they like? So Murajib school is my population. I am studying what is the favorite ice cream for the students who go at Murajib school. Okay, then I can study about UAE. Um, UAE citizens, do they like um, um, what? Going uh, for vacation in UAE or outside UAE like that? I can ask that kind of question. I want to see, do the citizens of UAE want to go for vacation outside the UAE or spend their vacation in the UAE? Then I can find about Abu Dhabi. Like, same question. People who live in Abu Dhabi, um, do they go for shopping in Abu Dhabi or do they go out uh, for shopping outside Abu Dhabi? The same thing with Alain. Uh, do the people of Alain like to exercise? Or what kind of exercise do the people of Alain like to do? Like that. Then I can do a survey for Altawai. So 
If I just want something to deal with Altawaya, then Altawaya is my population. Then I don't have to worry about any other place in a lane. If I want to, to know something about the whole of a lane, then the whole of a lane is my population. If I want to know something about, about everyone in Abu Dhabi, then everyone in Abu Dhabi is my population, like that. So population is a big group, okay? So grade sevens, grade sevens will be my population for grade seven. All grade seven, so 7A, seven 7B, seven 7C, seven 7D, yes? All the grade seven, maybe there's an E and F, okay? So all this will be my population for grade seven. Now, what is a sample? A sample is part of the group. So in grade seven, seven A can be my sample or seven B can be my sample or seven A and B can be my sample to represent everyone in grade seven. I can also use Altawaya to represent maybe all of a lane okay so altaware may be a representation of a lane because altaware is part of a lane a lane can be a sample for abu dhabi because a lane is part of abu dhabi abu dhabi can be a sample for uae because abu dhabi is what makes uae is part of uae is part of the seven emirates of uae Okay, so since the population is too big, we have to save time. You don't have time to go to the whole of UAE to ask questions. So you need to pick a small sample. You might say, I want to just survey the people in Alain. Or you might say, I want to survey the people in Fujairah. Or I want to survey the people in Ras Al Khaimah. Okay, like that. So when you pick a sample, it is smaller than the bigger group. Okay. And why do we pick a sample? Because we want to save time and we want to save money. Okay? Now, the reason why it is okay for you to pick a sample is because when you survey a population, um, if your population is small, you can survey everybody. If your population is big, you use the small group that is part of the big group to represent the whole group. So you're saying that information you'll get from the small group is pretty much the same information you will get if you ask the whole group. So why waste time to do the whole group? Just take a small amount and then survey these ones. Ask these ones the question. And the answers will represent everybody in that group, okay? That's what I wrote here. You will use the results of a survey, which is the sample, uh, to predict what the large group, which is the population, will do. So you take the sample, you survey them, that small group, and then that small group answer, you will use to predict the answer for the big group. So you don't have to uh, question everybody. So let's say you are in a group of 120, Maybe your sample will be 30. So you don't have to sample, you don't have to question 70 people like that. So you will use the results of a survey to predict what the large group will do because from a good sample, from a good sample, don't, um, from a good sample, whatever the results you get from them, usually has the same ratios as the response of the population. So the answers from the small group are related to the answers from a big group because they came from the same population. Okay? Now, when you choose a good, when you're choosing a sample, you must choose a good sample. Must choose a good sample. So you can't have you, your population can't be 100 people, and then you say you're going to do a survey of five people. You can't survey five people and call that a good, a good sample. Five people is too small for 100. So if, um, if you have 100 people, maybe 20, maybe 25, that would be good, okay? 
that will be a good sample maybe divide your sample divide your population into four equal parts so and you take one part of the four parts okay so you must choose a good sample so let's say you have a population of 200 people or 250 people so if i divide 250 by 4 250 divide by 4 so maybe i will survey 70 people yes or 80 people 70 people 62 is closer to 70 or 60 people 60 or 70 people there see so this will be a good representation of 250 people, okay? So about, about 60 people or 70 will be a good sample for 250 in the population. So this is population, population, and this is, you're conducting a survey, so that means you're using a sample. Okay? Like that. If your population is 50, then just ask all the 50 people. 50 is okay. But if your population is more than 50, then divide by 4 and then choose one-fourth of that. That will be good. Okay? All right. Let us continue. Now, this is Mr. Zayed's class. So we are doing over here, example one. So we're in Mr. Zayed's class and the students just came back from summer vacation and they brought photos from summer vac vacation. So you have six students who brought photos that were from the beach and four students photos that came from the campground. They took photos at the campground and seven students took photos at home and 11 students took photos at the theme park. The question is, what is the probability that the students brought a photo taken at a theme park? So what did I do? First, I needed to find how many students do I have? So I add six, four, seven, 11. So 28 students brought photos. So that means I, I have 28 students who brought me photos. And out of the photos, there were some photos for the beach, some for the camp, some for home, and some for the theme park. And the question wants me to find the probability of the photos at the theme park. So that will be 11 out of 28, because there is 11 for the theme park, and total there is 28 number of students. My number, my answer can be a fraction, or a decimal, or a percent. So there is the answer. What's the probability for theme park? Now... Question two, there are 560 students. So this is your population at the school, at Murejib school. Let's assume that. So predict how many students out of these 560 will bring a photo taken from the theme park. So you can do this butterfly method. You write 11 over 28 equals, you don't know this number. That's the number you want, the number from the 560. You know the number from the small group. The small group was 28, and you had 11 of them. And then the big group, you want the number from the big group. So you do the butterfly method, and you write 28 times x, and 11 times 560. You divide both sides by 28, and you get 220 students. So out of 560 students, we can expect 220 of them to bring the theme park photos because i said let x represent the number of students in this population who will bring photos that they took at the theme park remember your group is big your answer here should be bigger than the answer from the small group okay if your answer is smaller than from the small group you did something wrong make sure you set up your proportion correctly Make sure you do the butterfly method correctly. All right. Let us do example three. Now, instead of you giving a fraction, they gave you a percent. But you know you can write a percent as a fraction. So a survey found out that a people, that 85% of people use 
emojis on their WhatsApp messages. Predict how many of 2,450 students at Murejib school will use emojis. So my big group, my small group. Big group, small group. I write 85% equals to X over 2,450. I write 85% as a fraction. I do my butterfly method. 100 divided 100 goes away. X is this. Now, my answer cannot be a decimal because we are talking about students. Because we are talking about students, I wrote round to the nearest whole number because we don't use decimal when we are counting people. So that is why five is this number is five and more. You add one to the last digit. And there. You can do this method one or you can use this formula where you have part, percent, and whole. Part, percent, which we learned in term one. Part, percent, and whole. Okay? And there. It's the same thing I did. So you choose the method that is easier for you. You don't have to do both. Whichever method is easy for you, that's the method you stick with. Okay? All right. Now, here they gave you percent, but from a pie chart. So this is called a circle graph or a pie chart. If it is, it's called a circle graph or a pie chart. This shape right here, okay? And remember, this whole circle represents 100. So for you to check, just add 54 plus 46, you'll get 100%. Okay? Now, this one is made of two parts. There can be another one made of three parts, four parts, like a spinner. Okay? The parts don't have to be equal. Like here, the parts are not equal. It just have to be parts. Okay? So now, this is divided into two parts. One part is for no TV, and the other one is for those who have TV in their rooms. So I was doing this example right here, example four, okay? So we are surveying girls from ages eight to 12. So every girl was eight to 12 years we surveyed, okay? And we found that 54% of them have TV in their room, have no TV in their room, and 46% have TV in their room. What is the question? Predict how many out of 17, 1,725 students would not, keyword there, would not. So that means I have to use 54 because the question said would not have a TV in their bedroom. And you set up your proportion right there. 54% equals to that. And you put your butterfly method and you solve. Remember we have said we are talking about people. If you talk about people, your answer cannot be a decimal. It has to be a whole number. You can do it this way, or you can do it this way. Part equals percent times whole. So you have two different ways of you doing the same thing. So do Aleph, do okay one, two, and three. And then I see you on Sunday. Okay?